Alright guys, let me show you what I got going on today. It's time to make a little bit of fire starter. Here I have a large truck full of nuts coffee tin set up over top of my alcohol stove on top of a little uh, a sterno stove kit. And in here I've got a small uh, coffee can floating in some water. And in that double boiler I have just melted two blocks of golf wax. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this can it's the perfect size for this and some of these cotton rounds just make sure that they're 100 percent cotton and we're going to saturate those with some charcoal lighter fluid and get to work making some fire starters okay just a word of caution we are using an open flame we are using some kerosene. I didn't have lighter fluid, so I used kerosene. And we are using hot wax, so it's always smart to have your fire extinguishers ready. Now, with that said, sorry about that shakiness there. What I've done is I've taken that cookie tin and I put my half of my rounds in it. And I just went ahead and poured some kerosene on top. I didn't have any uh, charcoal lighter fluid. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and dump them out. And put them in another coffee can that I can put a lid on. Now, you don't have to worry too much about this drying out. Because kerosene just doesn't evaporate as fast as gasoline. But because they were stacked up like that, we want to check and make sure that we've got a decent saturation on each round. Now, you don't have to have it dripping, soaking wet. As a matter of fact, I don't like them real wet. I just like them moist. So kind of wetting them and then wring them out the best you can and they're ready to dip. Then all we're going to do is we're going to take one at a time, take a pair of needle nose pliers, dip them in this wax. I've got my flame cut down a little bit so it's not such a hard boil, but it's keeping it melted and then lay them out on this drying rack. Okay, now I've gone out and saturated those cotton rounds and I've put them in my coffee can and I'm just going to take out a half dozen or so at a time and I'm going to keep the rest of them sealed up. Like I said, you really don't have to worry too much about kerosene evaporating off right away, but I just soon keep them covered and minimize it. Now I just pick those up with the tip of my Leatherman tool, go for a quick dump, shake it off, try to get off as much as you can. Just want to drip for a minute and then take it and go right straight to my little cookie rack dryer here. Another quick dump and you can see that it just runs right off. Now sometimes depending on what kind of wax you use. Now this time I'm using the golf wax and many applications I don't like golf wax but golf wax is a petroleum product and we're making a petroleum based fire starter so they work pretty good for this particular application. I've also used leftover little candles you know, you always have, seem to have a little bit left over at the bottom of the candle that doesn't completely burn up or just some of the drippings. I've used those. I've used beeswax. I've used a mixture of all three. It really doesn't seem to make a whole lot of difference as long as it's enough wax that you're uh, sealing in some of that flammable liquids and you're putting a nice waterproof coating on the outside of it. Now you'll notice I've got a couple of scrap pieces of plywood over top of my table here. So all of this dripping that's going down is just getting on those scrap pieces of plywood and not my table. If you were doing this at home, you would definitely want to spend a little bit of time and uh, cover your equipment up because it wax does stick. Now I'm going to continue to do this for a little while and I'll bring you back after I've done a lot more of them. No sense in letting you sit here and watch me just dip round after round. Okay guys, what well, took me about an hour total time to make up, I guess it's 30 or 40 of these particular disc type fire starters. 
and also went ahead and made up a couple of dozen of these cigarette, cigarette butt sizes also. Uh, of course, what we're trying to replicate is the Mini Inferno that you can buy from the Pathfinder store and the Micro Inferno. And I know somebody's going to ask, and since this is take three on this particular section of the video, I'll just take one of these that I've already utilized in a couple of my previous takes. They're going to ask, does it work as well? Well, where, there you go. That's about a fourth of a pad, and that fires right up, and it burns good and strong and heavy. And no, I have not had any uh, problems with it losing its potency as time goes on. Uh, does it work? if you dip it in water first. Uh, on the first take, I did that. Um, as a matter of fact, it was the piece that I just used. I took the full round pad before I tore it and dunked it in water and it lit fire. Then I put it in the water to see if it would continue to burn and it did not, it went out. Then I pulled it out and I shook it off and I tried to relight it and it would not relight. Now, if I was to take that same piece and find some dry fibers in here and open it up again, I believe at that point we could get it to burn uh, once again, but it's not wanting to do that. So the trick with this is to leave it whole until you need it. And then when you need it, you rip it, you expose the fibers that are on the inside. The wax coating on the outside helps protect the inner fibers and that's what gives you your flame and a good long burning flame too from your ferrocium rod sparks. Now as far as are these as good as the Mini Inferno, I say no. If you look at the Mini and the Micro Inferno that we get from the Pathfinder store, uh, they have a very controlled manufacturing process and a premium fuel that they use as far as the accelerant base that they use. And it's just a very even, very nice looking end product that uh, it seals and it sheds water extremely well. So why am I making my own? Well, for teaching classes and for starting campfires and wood stoves here at the house, these homemade products work fantastic, even for camping trips. But for my emergency kit where I know I want Surefire, it is what I make is not going to replace my ferro rod and my mini um, Inferno or even the Micro Inferno. I will keep those products in my emergency kit. But like I said, as far as around home, these things are great. They burn a good long time. They're fun to make. They're inexpensive. Uh, just a couple of bucks and you can make a bunch of them. I guess I spent about an hour on this project to make as many as I did and I have enough to fill this can and also I have some friends of mine that dip and I have them collect up these um, cans for me and I just clean them out and I can fit one, two, three, four, five of them inside of one of these snuff tins. The little beef jerky tins work well also. Seal that up. You can even put a little bit of duct tape around it if you want to. And you've always got five of those. And that's plenty to do at least 20 fires. So by only utilizing a fourth of one of them at a time, unless conditions are really bad, that's plenty. So thanks for joining me once again. I'm Tim Langston with Red Dog Bushcraft, home of global safety and survival. Until next time, God bless.